it is time to install some flooring. What's up guys, my name is Lily, and this is where I document my real estate investing journey, bring you guys along with me. Today's video is gonna be a little different in that I'm gonna be showing you guys how I install this luxury vinyl plank flooring. We're here in a detached garage that myself and my parents and some of my friends have converted into another rental unit. So this will be a studio and we've been DIYing this stuff back here while the real contractors do the work in the front house. So today I'm gonna to try to make this video a little bit different than the other install videos that are out there. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about what it's like installing this for the first time. I'm going to be telling you all the materials that I'm using, all of the tools that I'm using, as well as keeping a timer running the entire time I'm doing this job to let you know exactly how much time it takes me. So if you're down for that, don't forget to change the color of the like button. I've gotta get this place cleaned up but after the intro, let's get into the materials and tools list. Let's go. All right, now that I have this space mostly cleaned up, let's talk about the materials that I have. So first and foremost, we've got the flooring. This is a luxury vinyl plank from Cali Bamboo. This is not sponsored at this time, but um, I really like this flooring. I've had my contractors put it down in another property. I really like how it turned out, but this will be my first time putting it down. This is the click lock flooring, so each piece clicks in with the next, so you don't need nails or anything. And it already has some underlay padding so that it'll be, you know, not too, too hard to walk on. Underneath the flooring, I'll be putting down this six millimeter plastic, and that is on recommendation from this flooring company that if you're gonna go right on concrete, then you need the plastic. Also, our concrete has like some gouges in it because this used to be a garage. And so I got this all-purpose putty which comes with this fill or this hardener. So I kind of spread it out and put it in some of the areas over there. I'll show you in a, in a moment. But if you do have gouges or anything, you're gonna want to fill those on your floor, I believe. There's also some nails in this floor that I need to go around and get up. So I've got a broom that I'm gonna be sweeping this floor up with. I also do have a shop vacuum that I'm gonna use, but if you don't have one of those, I'm sure a broom will do just fine. And I'm gonna use a hammer to either pound the nails flat or to pull them out. Other tools, let's talk about cutting. So, I have this circular handsaw right here. I will throw up on the screen right here how much this generally costs, but this will be for cuts that go across this way. I've got a jigsaw right here for like notching around different things, whether it be a corner or in the bathroom or anything like that. And for ripping, so if I need a piece that's thinner going this way, I could use this handsaw with a straight edge. This one, I could use this again. But we also have a table saw thanks to my dad. So I will be trying out the table saw um, probably as well as the hand saw and let you know which one I like and whether or not it's worth renting a table saw. I'm sure that you can get away with doing it just with the circular saw. Now, they do say that you could like score this with the utility knife and then just snap it. But everything that I've seen from like the super honest reviews online say that that's not really realistic. I will give it a try with my utility knife just to show you guys, but I don't have much faith that it's gonna work. So that's why I have the power tools to cut. Extension cords so that I can set my power tools up outside. Safety glasses. Or my gloves. Gloves are around here somewhere. Gloves right here, hopefully you guys can see that, is a box of tile. That's actually gonna be our backsplash. But I have that because I know I'll need something heavy to hold down the first pieces of flooring so that it doesn't slide. So I've got that tile, tile in here. Knee pads for me and my dad. I dislocated this knee and I tore my ACL in this knee so I do not have the world's best knees and I don't wanna be limping for a week after this. So I got some knee pads. And the reason I left this out is because in this space, this was a complete renovation. It used to look like this. 
Okay, so we have come a long way, but because there was nothing here, that means there's no trim. So this floor is just gonna be going on and then we're gonna put our baseboards on top of it and then caulk and paint our baseboards. So that's just something for you to consider. If you don't already have baseboards or you want to change them, you can put your flooring down and you'll be doing what I'm doing. But if you already have baseboards and you don't wanna remove them, you can put the flooring down and get something called quarter round and then you can put that to cover the gap. Um, so just depends on your preference and your current situation. I think that, oh, real quick, to actually put the flooring together, I believe you're gonna need at least three things. You're gonna need a rubber mallet, you're gonna need, yeah, a tapping block, and I'll show you guys how to use these in a moment, and you're gonna need a pull bar, which looks like this, and which I'm pretty sure is in my dad's car. He's on his way to help me out, so I'll show you guys how to use that when we get to it. But for now, I think that's all we need. If there are some materials that I'm forgetting about, I will put them right here as I discover that we need them. So let me start sweeping and making sure there's no nails or anything in this floor, getting up all the dust, and then we're gonna lay down our underlayment six millimeter plastic. Let's go. All right guys, so if you have any situations like this where there's a nail, or if you just have like putty built up, you're gonna want to pull those nails out with a crowbar or a hammer or something, and then you're also going to want to scrape up all of the putty so that you have a flat surface. All right guys, so we have some gouges in the concrete, and I have some of this all-purpose putty that you can put in there and it'll harden and then we'll have a smooth surface because somebody's stepping on this through the flooring, the flooring would flex a little bit and they would feel it. Now, this all-purpose putty came with some hardener that I lost, but the wood filler I got earlier also came with hardener and I tested it over there and it does harden this putty, so I'm just gonna go with it. So just clean that out so that there's no dust. So I'm just gonna put this in here. Put some hardener. There we go, let it dry. It took us one hour and 16 minutes to clear out this space, get up all the nails, flatten our floor, blah, blah, blah. Now it is time to lay down our six milliliter clear plastic vapor barrier. We're gonna lay it down everywhere. The flooring will go on top of that. Let's go. So we've got our plastic laid down and for one, this stuff is very, very slippery. But for two, my plan, my thought process right now is that as we lay the planks out, we'll make sure that the plastic beneath the planks is flat and stretched out 
so that when people are walking, once the floor is down, you don't hear any of this stuff. So that's the plan there. Next up, we need to measure this distance and then measure the width of a plank and make sure that we're not gonna have a tiny little sliver at the end so that if we need to cut our first piece, we can. I don't know how much sense that makes, but that's what we're gonna try. Then we're gonna open up a couple of boxes and lay out the different pat patterns so that we can alternate and make sure we don't have a bunch of one pattern in one area and a bunch of one pattern in the other. Let's try this. So this plank is seven and a quarter inches wide. So then our room, can you? Um, are you, wall. yeah, the wall, the edge of the drywall. So it's 158 inches, 21.8 planks, which means we're gonna have a plank that's pretty thin to start, to end. So if we cut half of it, that will reduce your right. overage. Because if we have 21 times the 7.25 inches that it is, it's 152. You know, it seems gotta be offset anyway. We're not talking, we're just talking with, we're not talking that yet. It'd actually be okay. It's just gonna be six inches, I think. Because we said it was 158, right? So the planks are 7.25 times 21 planks is 152. So then to get to 158, we'll need a six inch plank, which is fine. So we can start just with a full length plank. Okay. So real quick, let's make a pile with the different patterns. So we'll make like four or five piles right here, and then we'll put them in. From what I understand, they said that choosing your longest wall and having them go that way is gonna make your room look the biggest and be the easiest install because you'll have fewer cuts. Right. Um, and you need to, whichever way you're going, start at the back left because they click in from the right and the bottom. Cool? I'll just try it. Yeah, it snaps in place. And what about the bottom one? The bottom one. I think you have to lift it. Oh, so that. Mm-hmm. And then drop it in. Mm-hmm. So we go all the way down that way. Okay, now that, that works. There we go. And then we come back, okay. If we cut the first one to half, okay, the second row? I'm oh, talking about the, the second, second row right now. Oh, yeah. Okay, I thought you were talking about the first one. No, the first one's good, but if we cut the second row, the first one, and then it'll be half. Right. And this doesn't have to be perfectly square because it's gonna be under the baseboard. Correct. This will stay square because that's still the factory edge. That's true. I thought you were talking about cut that and I was gonna pull it out and cut the first one. So I think we should do this whole row. Yeah, I'm about to do this whole row, no cuts. <coughs> and then you cut this one and we'll have two Which rows. One? This one right here. Cut that one right yeah, there? Yeah, in half. Cause I can be in here doing this. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so we've got our pattern laid out, how we want it for our first two rows. And my dad just cut this piece. You cut it with the circular saw? Circular saw. With the circular saw, so just hand down. And we were talking about whether or not this piece needs to be perfectly square. And it doesn't, because this isn't gonna connect to anything. This is gonna be up against the wall, and then a baseboard is gonna cover right here. So this can be our first piece. That way our seams where the board ends will be staggered at least six inches. And the way the pieces click lock together, can you help me demonstrate this? So hold that short one. So on the end, when you have this type of piece that has the, this is the tongue or the groove? Tongue. Oh, tongue, tongue and groove, whatever. Yeah. One of them's tongue, one of them's groove. That's the tongue. This is the tongue? The groove but it looks like this is a groove. I don't know. Anyway, you have this one like this, and then you have the flat one, and they piece in together ooh, ooh, ooh. like that. 
and then you have a nice pretty seam once you hit it with the mallet. Okay. All right. I just need you to stand on that one, I think. So that I can. Can you put your full weight on it? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Now our seam. Watch out. That looks pretty darn good. Okay. Then, so we need to go, I think, side, bottom, side, bottom, side, bottom, like that. So you got to do the bottoms. Do the bottom. So like, put the tapping block on the edge there, and tap it towards me. Okay. And then, can you hit that joint? Like this? No, no, no. Just on the top. Literally. Mm -hmm. A little more. It's got a lip. You see what I'm saying? So now when we put this one, it'll solidify this joint a little more. At least that's what I think. Okay, so we have a problem. This joint right here, we didn't get this piece lined up 100% flat. Like you can see it's a little, this piece is a little over. And so while this gap is tighter, this gap is still very open because this piece right here is sliding this way. So got to make sure everything's lined up perfectly, especially to start. Okay, we officially have the first two rows in and one of the main things we wanna do is make sure that this floor is level, level? Parallel, parallel with this wall. Not parallel. Well, like the floor, perpendicular. not perpendicular. We don't want it like this. We want, we want this line of flooring, this edge oh, to be parallel with the wall. Because if not, like dad was just saying, if the flooring is going like this, and the wall's going like this, as soon as you walk in, you're gonna see it and we're gonna have weird cut pieces there. So one thing you can do is get spacers to put between the flooring and this um, drywall, but everyone I watched said that they didn't work. And so what we did instead was we just measured the distance between the drywall and the flooring at this end and make sure it's the same at that end. And then we'll put heavy stuff on the floor to make sure that it doesn't move and keep it going.
right, guys. We are one bloody finger in, four hours and 30 minutes in, and seven rows in for day one. Calling it a night, we'll come back tomorrow. We didn't get a full day in today because we were painting and finishing that up, but tomorrow will be a full day of flooring. My lessons for the day. Don't hit your finger with the mallet. That's number one. Number two, make sure your gaps are closed. Like actually hit them in before you go on to the next piece because if they're not in, then they're just, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Also, be careful with these, either the tapping block or the, what is this called? The pull stick, pull bar. Tapping block or pull bar. Be careful that when you have it on the edge of this piece right here and you hit it, you're not chipping the end because we chipped a couple of pieces hitting too hard with this. One thing I started doing is taking a scrap piece and instead of using these, using a scrap piece, putting the tongue and groove in and then hitting this. That way this will chip and this is just my throwaway piece that I'll use until it breaks and then grab another one. I think that's a good day one. I'll see you tomorrow. So one other thing is like, we ended up rolling this so that before we put a plank down, like we can both roll it and pull it tight. So that way it's not bunched up and you don't hear it. I can't get enough. So I don't think it's actually, yeah. So like, let's lift and then try to, yeah, it wasn't in. And push forward. There, now it's in. And you see the black line pretty much disappeared. So we're pretty good. It did click a little. So we're good, except for this right here. And so what I have to do is like hit it down and then feel it. And that's why I said I don't wanna take the gloves off because you can feel when it's still up. Like if you feel this edge right here, like you feel that's different, like it's not quite as down. Yeah. Just gently, and we're good. Now, what we should do is open up more boxes because we're out of planks. And like there's some designs, like this design is the same pretty much, where it has like those white marks. Yeah. So we were setting out the different designs in different piles so that we don't get one area with like all the same design. Yeah. We could like mix and match. All right, let's do it. When we get to the end and a full piece won't fit, what I've been doing is turning it around. Even though this end is gonna attach, turn it around and see where it needs to be. And then mark it and that's the piece that I need to cut off. So when I come back and put it correctly, it'll fit. If you have a speed square, you can mark your entire line. This line doesn't have to be perfect because this is gonna be against the wall and go under the baseboard anyway. Um, but I just flip it, make sure it's where it needs to be, mark it, and I'm gonna take it outside and cut it with the circular saw. Let's go. We just need to mallet that in, make sure it's secure. Like these little rocks and pieces of debris will like make a lump in your floor. So go ahead and sweep it out.
right, so now that we are at this last corner at the front of the room, we had this full piece right here. And so we cut it so that this piece can attach, not like that. This piece attaches here. And because there's nothing to connect to right here, it's okay that this is a cut edge because now this will attach here and that'll give us a good joint that's offset. And then we'll do this one and then probably a final, just one final piece there. I don't have to put down the plastic because it's not on concrete, it's gonna be on plywood. But this is a wet area because it's a bathroom, so I'm just gonna put down the plastic as an extra layer in this bathroom just because I want to. Okay, this is the first place that I need to notch it. And so because this is a full sheet to start, I'm going to cut a half sheet and then make sure my notch comes off the edge right here, and then the next sheet will just start right there. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna cut this sheet in half, and then my notch is gonna be three to four and a half inches down. So three to four and a half inches down, and I can see where this sheet is gonna end up being. And so I'm gonna cut out a piece like so. Be right back. Okay. So we got this piece. That's our first piece. I notched out this space and I cut this in half so that we can stagger our joints. Push that up. There we go. Now, one thing I didn't check is my space, how wide this space is. So basically, the space is 39 inches, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure my tape is three inches, four inches. So this space is 40 inches. Each of these pieces is right at seven and a quarter. So 40 divided by 7.25. I'm just gonna have five and a half. So hopefully this last piece will have one, two, three, four, five with just a half strip over here. And that should work well. So now, yeah, I just got more cutting to do to add everything on. Let's get to work. All right, I just had to do a bunch of recuts because I would cut a piece and then be thinking that it was gonna attach on one side, but it was actually supposed to attach on the other side. And so my cut side like this that can't attach to anything, that's the side I cut. Only side that can attach to something is the tongue and groove side. So just be careful and I need to be more precise when I'm marking and just really keep in mind what's attaching where so that you don't have to keep running back and forth to the cutting board like me. So at first, to go around the toilet flange, I was just going to cut a piece here, cut a piece here and have that open. But now I'm a little concerned that maybe that's not the best idea and I should like actually measure out the circle and just be a little bit more precise because if the toilet doesn't actually, well, it'll cover the whole thing. I don't know. I'm just thinking I want to be a little bit more precise, so I'm going to try something out. perfect but I tried to kind of notch around and the toilet should definitely cover all of that and I'll put a little notch in this side for the plank that starts here so hopefully you guys can see this but there's something stuck in the joints right there and so I'm trying to find something thin enough to try to get it out so that the next 
piece can fit. So I really hate to have to go back and take this piece out. So I'm pretty sure that's why this one won't go in. I'm having a little trouble with this bathroom because as you can see, we've got the shower over here and the contractor left me a nice gap for the flooring to slide right up under and give a nice finish. But it sliding up under means that it's hard to move and, and wiggle it as I go. Nope. That lip right there is not letting this piece of flooring in. Dang. I think I got it. I got the knife and I'm just picking it out of there. Whew. Now, is this gonna make our joint a little weaker? Possibly, but taking this piece out would have meant taking apart just about everything that's complete. Making sure that this joint is really clean. It's got to slide under. So once it slides under here, it's really hard to lift. Oh no, it's not in. Dang it. Am I gonna have to take all of this apart? guys welcome back it turned out that yesterday my contractors had already left and so I needed to wait until today to finish up these stairs I got this from her and as you saw earlier it's to cut the door jam so I need to cut this one right here so that the next piece of flooring can slide under and then we will put a bull nose piece a rounded piece right here and a flat piece of flooring here all right let's do this Here's a test piece of flooring. So it'll slide under there, but this one needs to be cut a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. Now that flooring will fit and we can finish up. Okay, it took a lot of work to get this last piece in because whenever you're under a door jam or like under the, the shower over there, it's really hard to lift in order to click in here. Also, there was something stuck under the door jam that didn't come out when I cut, so that's why I had to use the knife to kind of dig it out. But the last piece, well, last two pieces are this piece right here, the face board, and then we're gonna have a bull nose piece, which I forgot to get this morning, so I just have to run over to the place where it's at and grab it and then the bullnose piece kind of curves over both of these but this piece and the bullnose don't click together so I have some liquid nails that I'm gonna put all on the face of this so it doesn't come off and then on that bullnose eventually as well let me find my knife <sighs> try not to cut myself cut away. There we go 
So in a few hours, we have to go meet um, the listing agent for a property that I'm closing on tomorrow for our final walkthrough. And I've got a guy that is really, really knowledgeable in some of the things that need to happen with that property. And he is confirming that he's gonna meet me there. So I'm super excited for that. But the, the base of this, this um, tube is sealed. And my caulking gun doesn't have like one of those long pointy things to break it. So I've just got a long nail. And hopefully my hand's gonna be disgusting. business. There we go. And I'm going to put a little spot of gray caulk right here to seal that joint. Okay, that looks really good. I'm gonna find something to slide up against there. Okay, we'll let that dry. <laughs> then we gotta get our final piece. Before we get to the end of this video, if you haven't already, please change the color of the like button. It really does support the channel. Let's me know you guys like more videos like this. If you wanna see other DIY projects, comment them down below. And let's go to the final shot. And here we are. I don't know about you guys, but I think it's looking great in here. We put on the baseboard, put in the crown molding. As you can see, we've got our little kitchen. This space is completely transformed. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to change the color of the like button before you go. And until next time, thanks for watching.